From everyday life, we are familiar with many ideas and concepts of probability ranging from the board games, sports, weather predictions, future market, stock exchange, etc. Probability deals with the basic notion of a random experiment whose outcome is uncertain but is nevertheless subject to analysis. This module discusses the concept of experiments, sample space and events which form a stepping stone to understanding probability. With the help of examples, we will discuss how uncertainty and variation in the outcomes of an experiment prompts the need of probability to describe them. After studying this module, you shall be able to understand the difference between a deterministic and non-deterministic experiment. You will be able to learn the meaning of a sample space and event. These concepts form the stepping stone to understand the theory of probability. You would be able to identify the sample space in a given experiment. Lastly, you would be able to understand the diverse approaches to the concept of probability. From everyday life, we are familiar with many ideas and concepts of probability, ranging from the board games, sports, weather predictions, future market, stock exchange, etc. According to G. Leibniz, probability is a degree of possibility. It deals with the basic notion of a random experiment whose outcome is uncertain but is nevertheless subject to analysis. The concept of experiments, sample space and events form a stepping stone to understand probability. The need for probability arises because of uncertainty and variation in the outcomes of an experiment. The experiments we encounter in our daily life can be categorized into two parts, deterministic and non-deterministic. The non-deterministic experiments are also termed as probabilistic experiments. A deterministic experiment is the one where all the data is known beforehand and the outcome of an experiment can be predicted with certainty. Take for example that you want to know the amount of money in your bank account. All you need to know is the amount of initial deposit and rate of interest. The amount can be calculated with certainty and there is no chance involved in this experiment. On the other hand, a non-deterministic experiment is the one where the outcome cannot be known with certainty. In other words, the final outcome is uncertain, but possible outcomes can be identified ahead of time. An element of chance is involved in such experiments. Therefore, they are also called probabilistic experiments. Simple experiments like flipping a coin, rolling a dice, Playing card games, etc. are standard examples used for understanding probability because of their uncertain character. It is known that the possible outcomes are head or tails, but which of them appears in the toss is unpredictable in advance. Let's understand non-deterministic experiments with the help of an example. Any activity or procedure from our daily life or even hypothetical that may give rise to a well-defined set of outcomes is called an experiment. The time taken to reach college daily is non-deterministic because of the unknown factors like traffic, a flat tire, starting up late in the morning, etc. Therefore, if this time is noted for a week, then you will find a lot of variation in the data because of the uncertainty involved. Probabilistic estimate comes up when the likelihood of something happening is known, but when it will happen is not known. For example, rolling a die and noting the outcome is non-deterministic experiment. All the numbers of a die have one-sixth chance each to be selected, but which number will come up on the first roll is not known. Thus, it is an experiment where the outcome cannot be predicted with 100% probability. A probabilistic experiment is any process, real or hypothetical, where the outcome is uncertain, but the possible outcomes can be identified ahead of time. The depth of this definition 
allows us to call any imaginable process an experiment whether or not its outcome will ever be known any activity or procedure from our daily life or even hypothetical that may give rise to a well defined set of outcomes is called an experiment in this module we shall understand this concept by using the example of flipping a coin rolling a die playing card games etc these standard examples are used in probability because of their uncertain character as we have discussed the outcome of a probabilistic experiment is not known with certainty but the possible set of outcomes is very well known this set of all possible outcomes of an experiment is known as the sample space of the experiment and is denoted by the letter s take for example the experiment of tossing a coin this experiment has two possible outcomes heads and tails thus h and t which denote heads and tails respectively form the sample space of an experiment of tossing a coin let's understand the concept of sample space with the help of some examples if an experiment consists of flipping two coins then the sample space would include following four cases as presented the outcome h h refers to heads on both the coins and similarly both tails are depicted by t t if the first coin is heads and the second is tails then the outcome is h t and if the first outcome is tails and the second is heads then it is t h other examples of sample space could be if the outcome of an experiment is to determine the sex of a newborn child then the sample space would consist of two elements boy b and girl g so therefore the sample space is equal to a set of boys and girls that is b and g if the experiment is to roll a loaded die such that likelihood of getting an even number is twice that of an odd number then the sample space would include all the numbers of the die but every element of s is not equally likely that is s is equal to a set of 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 consider this experiment if two die are rolled simultaneously and all the possible outcomes are noted then the sample space contains 36 outcomes as shown in the table first number pertains to the result of the first dice and second number pertains to the second dice now consider an experiment which has infinite number of elements in the sample space suppose the experiment consists of counting the number of telephone calls arriving in an exchange in 1 hour in this sample space will not be finite evidently only a finite number of calls are possible in a specific time frame but any cut off number would be arbitrary and might be too small to understand the concept of an event first consider the following experiment in an experiment in which a coin is tossed 10 times the experimenter wants to look at the outcomes in which at least four tails are obtained in an experiment of inspecting 100 projectors the experimenter wants to look at the outcomes of finding more than four projectors defective in an experiment where the class strength is observed for the core statistics for 90 days an experimental wants to look at the outcomes that is the days when more than 60% of the students come to the class in the examples the word outcome should be understood as an event it includes those outcomes which are to be studied by experiments 
an event is any subset of a sample space in other words it includes a well defined set of possible outcomes of an experiment conventionally events are denoted by upper case letters like a b c without any suffix or super fixes or other adornments we would say that even a has occurred if the outcome of the experiment is one of the elements in a an event is any subset of a sample space in other words it includes well defined set of possible outcomes of an experiment conventionally events are denoted by upper case letters like a b c without any suffix or superfixes we would say that event a has occurred if the outcome of the experiment is one of the elements in a in the figure the rectangle represents all the possible outcomes of a non deterministic experiment in other words it is a sample space however the circle labeled a consists of all the possible outcomes under event a it is the subset of a sample space an event of an experiment is simple if it cannot be decomposed any further for example getting 6 on a roll of a die is donated as an event e equals 6 on the other hand if an event can be decomposed in simple events or is formed by the combination of simple events then it is called a compound event for example getting an even number in the roll of a dice is denoted by event b equals 2 4 6 here event b consists of three simple events type of events first certain event or sure event if the defined event is such that it contains every element of the sample space s then the event is called the certain event or the sure event it is an event which will surely happen if the outcome of an experiment take for example the experiment of rolling a die and the event a is defined to be obtaining a number greater than 0 now in this case sample space contains numbers 1 2 3 4 and 5 and 6 and the event is defined as a is equal to which is a set of 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 as all the numbers are greater than 0 it implies that in a roll of die event a is bound to occur therefore it is a certain sure event to null event or uh, impossible event if the defined event has no element in it then it is called a null event and is denoted by phi it is called an impossible event as this event has no element and it cannot occur for example consider an event of betting a number greater than 6 in a roll of die this is a null event as the number on the die do not exceed 6 there are two types of events which can be discussed at this point if occurrence of a rules out the occurrence of another event b then events a and b are said to be mutually exclusive events mutually exclusive events are also called disjoint events these outcomes have nothing in common in other words it means only one of the two events can occur at a time let's take an example where event a is getting an even number in the roll of a dice and event b is getting an odd number these two events are mutually exclusive as one of the two can occur at a time it is not possible to get an even as well as an odd number on a roll of a single dice example 2 let an even a refers to the multiples of 5 and even b consists of the multiples of 6 then a is a set such that it contains 5 10 15 20 25 25 and so on whereas even b is a set which consists of the elements 6 12 18 24 30 36 42 and so on in the above example number 30 appears in both the events a and b and thus 
they are not mutually exclusive they are overlapping events as is evident in the figure below the intersection of events a and event b it is not a null set therefore these are not mutually exclusive events another type of an event is the independent event these are the events in which the outcome of an event does not affect the outcome of another event for example if a coin is tossed two times then the result of the second toss is completely unaffected by the result of the first toss it means that the two tosses are independent having understood the concept of experiment sample space and events we can define probability as a precise numerical measure of the likelihood of an event the probability of event a would be denoted by pa which is a number called the probability of the event a take for example an experiment of testing a battery to have voltage within prescribed limits if the battery has required voltage it is said that event s success has occurred and if the required voltage is not met that the event f that is failure has occurred therefore the sample space contains f and s there are three approaches to study probability classical relative frequency and axiomatic approach classical approach says that if an event a occurs in m different ways out of the total number of n possible ways of a random experiment where every outcome has the same chance of occurrence and are mutually exclusive then the probability of the event is m divided by n in other words the probability of an event a occurring can be written as the probability of event a equals favorable number of cases to a divided by the total number of cases for example if a vehicle taking a freeway can turn left or right or go straight then the sample space has three possible outcomes which are equally likely and mutually exclusive in this case classical approach says that the probability of a car turning in a specific direction is 1 by 3 for each direction the classical approach categorically deals with experiments where the outcomes are equally likely and therefore this approach is not widely used Moreover classical approach requires the total possible outcomes of an experiment to be a finite number we have seen that some sample spaces may have infinite number of outcomes and in those cases the classical approach fails to provide a measure of probability let's understand relative frequency approach with the help of a statement if an experiment is repeated n number of times where n is very large and an event a is observed to occur m times out of the total then the probability of event a is defined as m divided by n this is also called empirical approach to probability the ratio m divided by n is the relative frequency of occurrence of a in the sequence of n replications of experiment consider an example where event a is that a student reaches the class on time Suppose the experiment is done 50 times and the student arrives on time in 20 classes then the relative frequency approach suggests that the probability of student reaching on time is 20 divided by 50 that is 0.4 this relative frequency fluctuates substantially over the course of repeating experiment and thus the experiment is to be repeated a large number of times to get a limiting value Let's discuss the limitation of relative frequency approach. As the relative frequency approach of probability is based on the notion of limiting frequency, its application is limited to only the experiments which can be repeated a large number of times. Moreover, it lacks on the ground that it requires a large number of trials. This is vague and time and cost consuming. Because of the difficulties attached to the classical and relative frequency approaches to probability, statisticians usually refer to the axiomatic approach to probability. 
In this approach, the probability of an event is required to satisfy certain axioms, that is basic properties, to be an appropriate measure of likelihood of the event. An event A occurs with probability P A if the following three axioms are satisfied. Firstly, P A should be greater than or equal to zero. That is, the probability of an event should be a non-negative number. Secondly, P S should equal one. This axiom implies that for a certain event, the probability is 1. Here, S includes the whole sample space and the maximum possible probability to be assigned for S to occur is 1. Thirdly, if A1, A2, A3 is a sequence of infinite mutually exclusive events, then the probability of A1, union A2, union A3, union A4 and so on equals the probability of A1 plus probability of A2 plus probability of occurrence of A3 and so on. This axiom holds true for the finite sequence of mutually exclusive events also. This axiom states that for any set of mutually exclusive events, the probability that at least one of them will occur is equal to the sum of their respective probabilities. After understanding the definition of axiomatic approach, we can derive a bunch of properties which will help in assigning probability. These are as follows. First, if event A1 is a subset of event A2, then the probability of occurrence of A1 is less than equal to the probability of occurrence of A2. Second, for every event A, 0 is less than equal to the probability of A, which is less than equal to 1. It means that the probability of any event lies between 0 and 1. If the event is a sure event, the probability of its occurrence will be 1, that is 100%. And if it is a null event, then the probability will be 0, that is P phi equals 0. Third, if A is the complement of event A, then P A complement equals 1 minus probability of A. This holds true as A and A complement together constitute the entire sample space which has probability 1. Fourth, if A equals A1 union A2 union A3, where A1, A2 and A3 are mutually exclusive events, and A equals S, then probability of A1 plus probability of A2 plus probability of A3 equals 1. Fifth, for every two events A1 and A2, probability of A intersection B complement equals probability of A minus probability of A intersection B. Example 1. If a balanced die is rolled, then all the sides are equally likely to appear and in this case, probability of 1 is equal to probability of 2 is equal to probability of 3 is equal to probability of 4 is equal to probability of 5 which is equal to probability of occurring side 6 that is each event has 1 6 probability the total number of cases is 6 the probability 1 6 satisfies axiom 1 as it is a non-negative number the probability of all the events occurring is probability s is equal to probability of event 1 probability of 2, probability of 3, probability of side 4, probability of side 5 and probability of side 6 which is equal to 1. Thus, axiom 2 is satisfied. Now consider events A and event B such that event A implies getting an even number and event B is getting an odd number. Both are mutually exclusive and equally likely. That is probability of A is equal to the probability of the side 2nd, 4th or 6th is equal to probability of, two, of second side, probability of fourth side and probability of sixth side according to axiom 3 which is equal to 1 half. Similarly, probability of B is 1 half. This implies 
that there is 50% chance of getting an even number and 50% chance of getting an odd number. Example 2, the events are not equally likely. Consider the experiment of choosing a student in a class of 50 students where 20 are girls and 30 are boys. Here the sample space of the event is a set of boys and girls but both the outcomes are not equally likely. A boy would be selected with the probability 0.6 that is 30 divided by 50 and a girl would be selected with the probability 0.4 that is 20 by 50. Here the probabilities are assigned as the ratio of favorable cases out of total cases of an experiment. The axioms of probability are satisfied. Deterministic experiments are the ones where no uncertainty is involved. The experiment where the element of chance is involved are probabilistic or non-deterministic experiments. The sample space of an experiment can be thought of as a set or collection of all the possible outcomes of the experiment and each of the outcomes in sample space S could be understood as an element of the set S. An event includes well-defined set of possible outcomes of an experiment. An event of an experiment is simple if it cannot be decomposed any further. On the other hand, if an event can be decomposed in simple events or is formed by the combination of simple events, then it is called a compound event. If occurrence of event A rules out the occurrence of another event B, then events A and B are said to be mutually exclusive events. In the case of independent events, the outcome of an event does not affect the outcome of another event. There are three approaches to understand probability, the classical relatively frequency and axiomatic approach. Let us now summarize what we have learnt in this module. In this module, we have learnt about two types of experiments. Deterministic, in which no uncertainty is involved, and non-deterministic experiment, where the element of chance is involved. The sample space of an experiment can be thought of as a set or collection of all the possible outcomes of the experiment. An event includes well-defined set of possible outcomes of an experiment. It can be a simple event and compound event. If the occurrence of event A rules out the occurrence of another event B, then the events A and B are said to be mutually exclusive events. In the case of independent events, the outcome of an event does not affect the outcome of another event. Lastly, we studied various approaches to study probability. Based upon the axiomatic approach, some properties have been derived which facilitate assignment of probability numbers.